it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought we would kind of chat about what it's like working with an editor at a traditional publishing house. If you weren't aware, my debut novel The Glass Witch is coming out October 18th. It is being published by Scholastic and my lovely editor is Tiffany Colon and I am just going to share my experience of working with her and working with Scholastic today to kind of give you an idea of what it's like because I know there's like a lot of mystery surrounding uh, what actually happens when you get an editor, right? Just some basic information up front. Most of the time when me and Tiffany chat, it is through email. There are some phone calls. Uh, so if that's something that you're nervous about, don't be. Your editor is there to help you. <laughs> so um, I know I was kind of nervous to be on the phone with anyone at, at first and I wanted emails because it's like safer, right? But it's really not that scary. They're there to help you. Obviously your editor chose you because they love your book. So there's really nothing to be scared about. But if you are still scared, don't worry. I would say like 90% of our communication is through email. And with me and Tiffany, I mean, your mileage is going to vary depending on your editor and your relationship with them. Um, but our conversations are professional, but very like light and conversational and friendly. So I think that's really good. That was one thing that I really liked about her when I initially had my phone call with her when she was offering for The Glass Witch. And she was happy and bubbly and easy to talk to and very personal and relatable and like very millennial. So I was like, oh, we, we're gonna get along great. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have an editor who is very professional and can get the job done, but still throw in a funny pun or something <laughs> in an email. So how it all started. Um, if you're interested in learning about my auction or my original phone call with Tiffany. I do have videos showing my entire selling my book experience. I will link those down below so you can check those out because I won't be going into that here. But basically after my auction and after I decided to go with Tiffany and Scholastic, uh, we were obviously very excited and Tiffany sent me and my agent an email saying that she would love to hop on the phone with us and just kind of do like a meet and greet chat where she just wanted to, you know, say thank you for choosing me. I'm so excited. Gushing about my book again. Um, again, reiterating what she saw revision wise and where she sees it you know falling in the market and just really chatting and getting to know each other a little better one thing that I really love and respect so much about Tiffany is that she really wanted to make sure no matter what edits we did it was still a book that I loved and was super super proud of so during that call she's like I am going to reread your book completely I'm going to try to forget everything I know about it and reread it as if it's for the first time and then I'm gonna go back again and do some edits um, but I want to know up front is there anything that you're very very passionate about that like no matter what you don't want to change which I loved very very much that she did that um and I didn't have too many things that I was super passionate about obviously um Addie's journey of being like a little chubby girl and learning to love herself was very important to me and I really liked having some of the villains POVs dispersed through the book those were the two things that I was very passionate about anything else I was like I trust you we can make this book the best it can be basically together. So after we hopped off the phone, I didn't hear from her for, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks as she was reading. Um, I was doing my own thing, working on my next book. She was doing whatever editors do, running the world. <laughs> and then later on, I did get an email from her saying that she had read the book and that she was going to be sending me my book back in a Word doc with all of her inline edits in. Uh, most of them were just comments or questions of things that she thought could be developed more or kind of like squealy like oh my gosh I love this line <laughs> type things which was really nice and then she also sent me a word doc of a full edit letter um starting of course like it's the compliment sandwich everything that she loves things that she thinks could be improved upon and then the bottom again like I love this book and she did say at the bottom of the edit letter like if you need to chat on the phone about any of this stuff you know bounce ideas off of me like I'm always here for that and again I really appreciated that because I do like it just seems smarter to bounce ideas off of her than do them and them not work out. Whereas I could just have talked to her in the beginning and make sure that it clicks. Um, so I think I did utilize that some and we talked, I think we talked two or three times um, in between rounds of editing, which went quite similar um, 
I think we did like three rounds of editing so uh, I would talk to her I would do the edits I would send them to her and then she'd be like hey do you want to jump on the phone really quick because I want to talk to you about this next round of edits she would say you know we really like did great we got in there we got almost everything done she's like I just want to like tweak this a little bit more or I just want to bring this to the forefront a little bit more and so we talk on the phone and then I would do those edits again and it went on like that for a couple months as we finished the developmental edits on the book uh, and then we transitioned trans into line edits which are more like sentence heavy editing um, than like overarching themes and stuff like that so with that the great thing was she had done a lot of line edits as she was doing the developmental edits so the line edit was not very terrible <laughs> a lot of it was like grammar and punctuation um asking if certain you know the meanings of certain references um if children would understand this reference or this meaning and so forth things like that and then we went on to copy edits and this was a bit different than anything else because i wasn't just working with my editor i was working with multiple copy editors in-house so for that what it looked like for me was i received a pdf of my book and by the time i got it the copy editor had already gone through it sent it to tiffany and tiffany had gone through it and then she sent it to me so i was told that for the copy edits what i needed to do was if there was an edit from the copy editor saying you know i want to change this or this should be changed or this isn't grammatically correct um if i agreed with it i leave it i left it alone if i didn't i let them know the technical term is stet so s-t-e-t -E uh and that just means like i'm saying no i'm overruling this edit it's there for a specific reason even if it's grammatically incorrect or whatever sometimes there were uh, questions that copy the copy editor would have and either i would answer them or tiffany would answer them um a lot of times even tiffany would be like stet on things she'd be like no this is specifically for the voice we know this um lindsay are you okay with me studying this and i'd just be like yes so i went through the document did all of that and now the copy edits are done and it's off to proofreaders i suppose <laughs> now a lot of our correspondences are a lot more than just like editing sending the manuscript back and forth uh, a lot of it is like promotional stuff too which is really really exciting anytime there is a question uh from the publisher any part of the team marketing sales whatever it feeds through tiffany to me or at least it has so far i know eventually that could change i could get like assigned a publicist or I don't know, like a marketing manager or something, but right now it's all feeding through Tiffany. So I talk to her quite frequently. So some examples, um, I was asked to do a little segment of a podcast for Scholastic's in-house launch in December. And so uh, Tiffany sent me like what I needed to do for that. And then when I recorded the podcast thing, I sent it back into her. Um, and as well as any kind of illustrations that are in the book, I get them through her. When we learned who my cover artist was, that all came through her. Oh, my dedication. And acknowledgments that all came through her as well so we chat a lot and i think the closer that we get to publication we'll probably chat more but it's kind of just like when something comes up she emails me or when i have a question i email her and that's pretty much it uh, maybe i can make a part two of this after i debut maybe there's more to it that i don't know about yet so i can do that maybe if people are interested in the future but that's that's pretty much it that is what it's like working with an editor it's just a bunch of emails back and forth occasionally phone calls and just like i just feel very very blessed to have tiffany because again she is so nice and so effective and just very good at what she does but she's also just like funny and relatable so i'm very blessed to have her tiffany if you're watching i love you thank you for choosing me <laughs> That's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions about uh, getting an editor or what it's like working with an editor, drop them down in the comments below and I will answer them the best that I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.